Good morning, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art here, and I'm going to show you a quick and easy tutorial this morning on painting clouds. Now, clouds are just one element of your painting, but they're an important element, and there's all sorts and different ways to paint them. But I have kind of a quick little easy way that I'm gonna show you this morning, and they are something that you can practice from this little video and then implement into your paintings. And like anything else, it takes a little practice. Now, remember, it, when you say, oh, geez, I can't paint clouds, unless you have somebody that has shown you step by step and then you can practice, how would you know how to paint clouds? I can't walk into the uh, the garage and say, oh, I, I can't change my oil. Well, if someone had showed me step by step and I practiced, then I would be able to change my oil and I would get better at it. I'm not a great cook. So when I go in the kitchen, I can't say, oh, I can't make lasagna. But what do you do? You look at a recipe, you can watch a video, and you learn step by step. So that's my whole uh, mythology. I like to uh, teach you step by step, especially for beginners, tiny little baby steps, how to get through your paintings. So I will show you my quick way and um, try it and practice it and let me know what you think. So I'm going to turn my camera down so you can actually see what I'm working on. And I'm just going to do clouds and I will show you um, how I do it. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I do have a little bit of a method to my madness. I do do my clouds sort of similarly each time. I vary them. You don't want a set of clouds that look exactly um, the same and you repeat. But basically, what I start with, and I'm going to demo it, but I just want to show you. I start with like a little bubble shape usually. And then I add a few little bubble shapes off. And sometimes it's more and sometimes more on one side. And I sort of taper my paint off to the sides sort of straight. What I, what I aim towards is having a nice crisp line along my top edges. And then I fade my paint into the background on the bottom of the clouds. Now it sounds like a formula and it is, but it works. And again, you can have, you know, all sorts of shapes. You don't want them all to say the same, but this is how I start with a bigger one in the middle and then I work my way out. And it becomes second nature after a while. So watch what I do and then maybe give it a try. All I'm going to use today for colors is a primary blue, white. I'm gonna mix a little purple in to suit some more detailed clouds. I'll show you that with the red and the, and the blue mixed. I like this gold color. At the end, when the clouds are nice and dry, I like to put a little gold tint in there. Not really yellow. Yellow doesn't really do it for me. I do like a gold, so more like a yellow ochre color. I've prepped some boards, but I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to, to prep a sky, and then we'll practice clouds on the boards that are dry. And again, there's many, many, many ways to paint the sky, many colors to add, many different weather situations you want to um, emulate. But just to get started and do it pretty basic, I just start with my dark blue. And I just go onto the, I'm going to make sort of a, a calmer sky. Lots of times I'll use lots of brush strokes and get uh, a lot of action in my sky. And we'll do that another time. But for now, we just want to prep the board so that you could practice on it. So I start... Just with the straight blue on the top, it's pretty dark. I do a little bit. Then I start just going into my white and blending it. You wanna work fairly quickly so that your colors stay wet and you can blend. And now I'm just going into more and more white. There's blue on my brush, so it won't be strictly, you know, a straight white. It's gonna just taper down into a lighter blue. And again, I'm just going back and forth and the acrylics do give me some time to blend. And these little panels I'm just practicing on, a little canvas panel, five by five by seven. But I think afterwards I'm gonna take them and just paint a little ocean scene and maybe some sand on the bottom. But for now, we're doing skies. Simple as that, dark blue with white and just kind of shade it down to a lighter blue. So we'll put that aside to dry. And I'm gonna show you some cloud examples first. So again, you can be as Simple as a light blue sky with some white streaked through. Paint your blue a lighter shade than we used. And while it's wet, streak some white through. That's just a very light sky, some clouds in the background. And then you can also go ahead and do some that are just using just the whites. So, and, and this is just white. I did put a little purple. I'll show you that technique. But I just put a little heavier up top, fade it towards the bottom. They're not very detailed, but they do the job. They look 
like clouds. And sometimes you could do just a big shape. There's a big shape here and then a little one here. And you can see I had that little bit of gold mixed in. I'll show you um, the different techniques. This is one that's a little more detailed. This is a painting I just am working on. It's not finished yet. It's gonna be cute with the flamingos and the bus and some palm trees and whatnot. But I did pretty detailed clouds on this painting. And not that it needed it, but I knew I was doing this tutorial. So I thought, let me go on and do some more uh, detailed clouds. So you can see we have a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow on top, gold rather. Heavier again on the tops, fading out on the bottom. Same sort of shapes. I kind of get a little higher in the top and work out. Once you start practicing and playing around with these, play around with your shapes. Try to be um, conscious of starting bigger in the middle and your little bubble shapes, but move, make them all different size. A couple of big bubble shapes and some little ones or, or whatever you like. I'm going to go onto this small board first and show you those really simple, just the white clouds that you could use on a quick painting. The brushes that I like to use on uh, clouds in, in, in lots of my landscapes. I like to use a white bristle brush uh, in different sizes. I like the um, texture you can get with these. I like the fact that they're a heavier brush, not as soft as the synthetics. But if that's what you have, go right ahead and practice with those. Uh, if you want to add a few brushes to your collection, these uh, I do like for a lot of different things when I'm painting landscapes. This is an eight. Uh, I use a, I use a, a 10 a lot, I eight. And if you want something smaller, like a six or a four, you really don't need all the sizes. But, and they, oh, they are filberts. Filberts means they are rounded on the top. And I like these better for uh, than the just square brushes. So I do use these. These are all we'll use today for our cloud painting. Maybe at the end we can... I'll, I'll throw in a few different brushes that I happen to have that you might have that you want to try a different, a different type of cloud with. But that's the brushes I, I use, and these are the colors. And it's simple as taking some white, and these are the bubble shapes I was talking about. So I just kind of make a little half moon, right? Maybe a few off to the side. Maybe one off to the side. And see how I just kind of drag the sides out? And you want to work a little quickly now. So you're going to dry off your brush. I, I, I do a lot of dry brushing in my painting. I'm drying off any of the white paint. I don't want to wash it in the water. I don't want to get uh, too much water on the brush. It will just ble it will just make the paint run. All I want to do is use this dry brush very lightly and to soften the bottoms. So I'm just giving it a little... You can hear, hear, hear the brush almost. It's, I'm really kind of scrubbing it and dragging it out. And that's all I need to do. Take a little more white, wherever you might want another cloud. Sometimes I like to put a cloud in front of another one here. And just that light bluish look behind there, because we scrubbed it out, gives you that little shadow behind. And I have to be careful as well, because I sometimes tend to make all my clouds the same shape. So I'm going to try to be more conscious of that. I've got this bubble here. I'll do another big one. Make this a bigger one. But you never want to just end that way and leave it. Yes, clouds look like that, but to me, it looks more pasted on. Somehow doing this little, dragging it out a little bit, sort of fades it and makes it look a little more natural. If you do study clouds, you can see how crazy they look and amazing sometimes. But I feel sometimes if I painted them that way, they might not look real. But do, do uh, play around, because you can make big, big formations, too, like we sh I showed you in that little hibiscus paint. And you can make it quite big. Whatever you do, just end up by softening the bottoms. Sometimes you might just want a little, little streak very lightly. I'm hardly touching the canvas with that. I'm just dragging that across. When they dry, I go back and I like to highlight the tippy tops. I'm taking just a little bit of white, taking some off. I, I never want to go with a big, full brush load onto my cloud because I'd rather start really light and build up rather than have a big blob on there trying to get rid of it. So I start fairly light. I take paint, but I wipe it off. And I'm just going towards the tippy tops of the clouds now. And I'm just, I'm almost taking just a little white on the corner of my brush, using that corner with the paint to the top of the cloud. And every time I think it's fading in too much, just take a little more paint, start again. I go back and I repeat this process as many times as I need to to where I like that it's highlighted on the top. Sometimes the paint dries and it sort of fades into the background. So just watch it as it's drying. 
and if you want to put more you can and sometimes I go ahead and I'll add little bits you know something like this in front you can really go crazy and just use your imagination. So this could be a cloud in your painting. You wouldn't have to go any further. You wouldn't have to add the shading and the gold or anything else if you didn't want to, because that makes a nice cloud if you're doing a little painting. So that's the basic cloud, the basic shape. I always like it to be a little more of a, uh, a, a hard edge on the top and soften the bottom. Pretty easy stuff. It's just practice. You, you don't really want to do too many clouds that are the exact shape, like I said. So when you do a few, just set it aside and step back maybe, and then visualize uh, some other ways to paint them. So I'm going to put that one aside now. Our other board is drawing, but I have a little bigger canvas here, and we're going to do the same thing, and then we're going to add some detail. So again, start the same way, and this gives you a, a nice uh, video to, to watch me do this over and over again. You could certainly use a picture as a reference and go by that. I'm just making these up out of my head right now, but if you're using a reference photo, do your best and just copy those shapes. So again, I have the, the uh, white paint on there. I'm making my bubbly shape. And do practice maybe adding just the color, the white, on the one side of the brush and patting it off. That almost, if you watch now, almost blends that color for you without going back and scrubbing too much. So that's a little technique uh, of brush loading that does take practice though, but do do uh, try it. Just a little corner of the brush, use that corner towards the top, make your cloud shapes, drag it out on both sides like I do, dry your brush off and work fairly quickly. Do each cloud individually because if you don't, this is going to dry and you won't have time to do this scrubbing. So then I just sort of soften it in. And that's enough for one. Maybe we'll make a different shape down here. Maybe a bigger, a bigger, shorter shape, like a little cumulus cloud there. Here's another tip that I find. Um, you don't really want to end like down. I like to end going straight out. Now, again, that's my formula. Many clouds do have this going down and you could paint that little, you know, you see sometimes that little shine coming out of the cloud. But sometimes if you get a shape that's too much um, pointing down, it doesn't look as natural. Bump it up, bump it up. And, uh, and, and, and now watch, I'm putting that paint on and sort of scrubbing it out at the same time. Loading my brush, taking a little off, painting my little bubble shape. And can you see, because the bottom of the brush here really doesn't have paint on it, and the top does, and I'm almost scrubbing it as I go along. So these are little techniques to start with the basics and then start playing around with the brush control and how you load your brush as well. You can just have one peeking out on the side sometimes. And again, a really light one, hardly touching the brush to the canvas, really wispy like you're almost putting makeup on or something. You're just, just giving that a little bit of a, a wispy look. And now I would let it dry a tiny bit I'm going to go back and really highlight the tippy tops, but on, on, not on all of them. Like say you wanted to keep that as a little wisp, I'm not going to touch it. That's the way that will stay. But these guys, you can go right on and you can change the shapes, make them a little bit more cloudy and bubbly if you want. So just hit the tippy tops. If you need to, you can sort of soften it if it looks like a harsh line. <clears throat> And sometimes I like to put, again, one right in front of each other. I wouldn't go up too high. I want to leave room here so it gets a little darker where this one is in front. And now you get the illusion that there's a shadow behind there and this one pops forward. And that's also a place where I'm going to put that like purpley shadow behind there. And I really do go back and soften if I have to. I don't like those little pointy bits pointing down, so I'm going to just soften that out. When I'm, when I'm softening, I just hit the bottoms and then pull out, like I said. And a little bit more on the tippy tops of these. And you can also just do, let's say we shy, uh, uh, highlight one side, leave that a little darker. That's kind of a cool look. I'm trying to make a few different examples for you here. I'm going to make another cloud in front here because I want to have places to show you how I do that little bit of shading. I mix up a shade color, and I'll show you it in a minute, of a purpley color, just the blue and the red. You could certainly use black and white and get a gray if you want one of those real stormy skies. 
I tend to paint more colorfully and whimsically. I don't use gray a lot, but you could get some great uh, techniques and mood if you did want to do that. So try them different ways. I'm just going to take my smaller brush here now. And I'm just going to mix up a little bit of a purple. So I'm taking a little of my blue. And if you're using your primary colors, you get a nice purple, a nice primary red, nice primary blue. And I watch it as I mix. That's looking a little too blue to me. So I just <clears throat> go back and forth to the red and the, and the blue to get a tone I like. So that's fine there. If you wanted a more darker, dramatic sky but didn't want to go all the way to the black and white, you could add a tiny bit of black to this and you'd get that nice deep shadow. And I am going to add a little water to that. I want it to be a little more watercolory so that I can have more time to blend. And I want it to have it go on super light. I don't want it too heavy, so I'm using a bit of water there. And I'm just going to go where I might want shadow or I might want the bottom. So a lot of times just on the bottom of the clouds, I just put a little of that purple on. I'm going to dry off my brush. And if it's a little harsh and dark, no worries because we'll just dry brush some white on top of it. So I'm just going to soften it. And because that's watered down, we have some extra time to soften there. And I'm going to dry that brush again because I want a soft end blend underneath here. Where this paint is wet, you can always go right into your water and just use the water that you pick up to blend it too. It's like a little watercolor. There. I think I'll add a little white going forward because it's just a little dark for that blend for my liking. When I have two clouds, one in front of each other, I add a little, let me get back to that. It's a little too pink there. Remember, it's a trial and everything. I'm gonna put a little purple behind here. I would wait till these clouds dry usually, but I don't wanna have you here too long. So I will just kind of paint it and try to avoid the wet areas. And I'll soften that up into my cloud. And again, you can just put a little tiny bit in sometimes, just a little tiny scrub. There's hardly any on the brush there. Same on the bottom here. You can see the difference. That was a little dark. I'd rather go a little lighter like this. And I'm going to add some behind because this is a shadow with the blue, the light blue there. But you know, if we add a little bit of this, it'll really contrast nicely. Okay. So I put the color on. I'm always, even when I'm painting landscapes and things, I'm always dry brushing and softening and blending. If we were painting in oil paints, you have all the time in the world, which is why oil paints um, are kind of cool. But the speed of painting and uh, the ease of it being water-based with acrylics is nice. So we just have to adapt the technique sometimes to extend the drying time. There are extenders you can use too to extend your drying time, but I just rather work a little quickly. So now I would go back. I've just I've just dried the brush off on, on my paper towel. I'm going to go back into the white because if it's ever a spot where it's a little dark, we will go over it and lighten it. It's a little wet there still, so we'll let that go for now. But we can go back up here. Can you see? I did highlight these tippy tops, but it's sort of fading a little bit. So I'm going to go and give it just a really bright uh, touch here and there. And it doesn't have to be the whole shape like we did before. You could kind of almost go in and dab it if you wanted to get little highlights in different places. We've really lost the blend, the, uh, the highlight here, so you could go back in. And then I just dry my brush off, and if I need to, I soften a little, but sometimes I just leave those edges at the top there. Just hitting it here and there on this one. I don't want to do the whole top, but I like to hit a few spots. And when you do that, if you can see, it's really bright right here. I've left a little spot, so that gives it a little shadow. It gives a little form to the cloud. Again, it's going to be trial and error for you. It's going to be playing around and just painting clouds and painting clouds, having fun. You could do it on a piece of mixed media paper or canvas paper. It doesn't have to be on a canvas. It's a little wet, so I'm just really using those little touches. But see, just practicing and playing around. I don't know what's going to happen, but I like the way the white mixed with a little of that purple, so that's not a bad thing. I think I might like a little bit something in front here just because I like that dark shadow there, but I don't like the way it ended against the blue. So look, it will just add. And again, I want to soften it a little bit. It's a little rough there for my liking, so just with the dry brush, we'll just soften it. Now, what would you do if your cloud was too dry and it didn't budge, you couldn't soften it? There's always ways to work with it. I would just go back to my blue mixture, try to match what I have in the sky there a little bit, 
and then just soften it up into the cloud and you can certainly blend that way. And if you think you've gotten too white in some places, you can certainly go and just add a little of the blue back. But remember, just then dry brush and soften it in. The little gold touches that I really like to add, and let me show you again one that might have a little more of that. Let's see, that you can see. So this one here, you can see the little bits of gold. Very last is when I add those at the very end when the paint is really dry, because if you have any blue that mixes in or purple that mixes in with that gold, you won't get that nice glowy sunshiny look. So I let it dry really good and then I add it in. I'm gonna to try to add it in here now just so you can see me do it, but I would recommend letting it dry a little more. I don't wanna use the gold this strong. I'm gonna pull it aside. I'm gonna mix it with some white. I want a very light goldy color. And even as many clouds as I've painted, I still can't go right onto it and know if that's gonna be exactly the right shade. Sometimes when you put it on, it's too dark or too light. I go on the light side so that it's easier to add color than take it away. So I always add a little tiny bit, very lightly, and then I can adjust it if I need to. There's no rhyme or reason or where you're gonna put these little gold touches. I randomly just put them in the white areas usually. Oops, my brush is shedding, which they do. So. I'm gonna go in just a little bit here and there. It's on the verge of being too dark, but it's it's showing up nicely, so I'm gonna go with it. And like I said, I do a few tiny touches, leave it, move on. Don't get too involved, you don't want too much. You don't even have to hit every cloud with them, you can just do some. I just randomly, really quickly, really lightly, and don't think about it too much and just do them. And that just adds a little bit of gold to it. Well, that's pretty much it. That's the pretty basics of clouds. There's something that you can take and practice. I would love to see your, your, your practices and your paintings. And that's as simple as it is this morning. I just want to give you a little tiny bit, a little building block that you can use. And this is the sort of thing that I put inside my membership, the Tinker's Cardist membership, which is pretty brand new. We've got a good number of members. And in that membership, we do... Uh, classes. So we do paintings with our small group. We do Zoom critiques and Q&As and we do little tutorials like this and they will be recorded usually, always. I, I didn't record them the other night when I did a Zoom with the group so I'm doing this little tutorial now but I, it gives me a chance to show you all too what's inside the membership. Little building blocks to help you build your confidence and expand your um, artistic abilities but little steps at a time because if we we do clouds when I'm doing a painting. So we're doing a paint night. We'll do the whole thing and we'll, I'll show you quickly how to do clouds. But I think it's nice to focus on waves or clouds or grasses or just different elements that you can use and, and put in your little library of uh, knowledge. And then when you see a painting or a picture or a photograph or you take one or you're somewhere and you want to paint a scene, you have a little background knowledge of, oh, I, I, can, I know how to do clouds. And then you can, we'll do waves one day. And so that's um, important, I think. Anyway, I appreciate you popping in and uh, watching this and be sure to save it and go back and uh, let me know on the page, post your pictures or any questions, direct message me. Uh, I will answer you all the time. If you need a little critique, send me a little picture. You can do it privately. Sometimes I, I try to answer all of uh, the comments on the posts if you have a question, but I could miss them. So the best way, if you really wanna get um, a quick response is just send me a message and say, oh, hey, I have a question about this or here's my picture. What should I do differently? I'm always there to answer questions for you. I love painting with you guys. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.